Hello Cinematech Geeks, James Garden here with a, another episode. Today I want to go over something which will affect you now and into the future. This is looking into the crystal ball of what's going to happen with you with content and your digital cinema. Now, what I mean by that is that uh, digital media or content or if you need to show anything in your theatre. Now, traditionally as you're going to uh, DCI based cinema, you will get content on these hard drives of course, uh, anywhere between 100 and 200 gigabytes per movie. Plugs directly into your player or into some sort of management server at your location where you can send it to your players over the network of course. We also have, um, coming with that, as we've got here, we've got three separate types. Basically these are trailers and this is a one way that trailers come. Um, there's a few different vendors here with different trailers for example. As you can see they're nothing but USB keys, 4 gigabyte USB keys which is about what you need for a trailer. Also quite common is also trailers being distributed on DVD. Now that solves all your DCI content getting to you as well as those who are lucky to have satellites, so most in the US, but the rest of the world um, may or may not happen. Now, of course, cinemas generally show more than just than, uh, movies on the occasion. So, like most cinemas, we have one of these. Yeah, it's a DVD Blu-ray player. can plug directly into uh, DCI projector through the HDMI port and you can basically play your, your um, movies on the occasion if you need to directly out of that. Now that's quite common and a lot of people have have, have had digital projectors over the years just to do the, the occasion of these um, presentations etc. But uh, in the future these are becoming less obvious and less used. For example um, commonly here at the Sun we do a lot of work with um, uh, people making independent films or short films etc and they come in here to um, see the content on the screen you know pre-shows and or testing content etc now traditionally they used to bring them on this but these days like all e-cinema type content which is basically digital content that's not DCI they come on like these portable hard drives, right? Very sturdy, um, can fit quite a few few movies on these, and these are commonly used for sending all the e-cinema content, a lot of independent content in Australia is distributed on these devices and played back on e-cinema playback devices. Now, <coughs> it's quite well known that the trend is towards um, tapeless workflows, so digital files are coming the norm. Um, so digital files uh, are being sent all over the internet etc so then bumping into your cinema for, for particular reasons or special reasons is going to be probably become quite common in the future especially if you do any sort of alternative or something out of the mainstream now and then it's, it'll be a very common problem. Now the DCI player manufacturers have approached this in a number of ways a lot of them have produced uh, tools which allow you to convert the content to a DCP. These tools are really good. Um, there's Cube Master Express, uh, uh, Doremi have a product as well. Um, there's also another, there's a few now. Uh, all they really do is allow you to take a digital media file that's commonly produced by all these editing systems, all these people now going to tapeless workflows, etc. Uh, and convert it to a DCP. Now, uh, there's a few issues with doing this, um, and it's not really the the total solution. So it's not a bad solution, but as someone who's worked in post for for 15 years, there's a few little issues with doing this. Um, mainly, for example, it has to be converted to 24 frames a second. So there's a bit of frame blending and, and other bits and pieces, which is which is if it's been made at 25 or 30, it's actually um, you know, taking the quality down and affecting the picture uh, and, and you probably won't, won't want to do. Um, 
and it also has to be rescaled and everything. There's other issues as well. Um, sound levels, um, positioning, all those sort of things. Um, some of the tools allow you to do that, but you basically have to get that right in like a post. You have to know what you're doing, you have to be sort of trained and uh, doing it. So you're up for a bit of cost, like the software, $5,000 for a decent computer, which can do it in a decent amount of time, probably five to $10,000. And then the knowledge transfer for someone who knows what they're actually doing. Um, so it is, it's a decent solution, but it's a costly one and it has its drawbacks. Um, but uh, like there are other, other solutions, like some of the Eastern solutions, like for example, the one that I work on, I'll just, uh, just need to put it forward that I actually did, I'm a, one of the major developers in an Eastern solution that's used uh, throughout the world in lots of different countries. And instead of um, uh, processing it, it could take one to three days depending on the length and the amount of money you throw at the processing, um, you can basically get a, a, a common eCinema solution which can do all the audio and any video um, effects in real time. So you just load it on the eCinema system, go straight into your play and push play. Now, those are the two methods you'll be able to approach um, the, this, this problem. Um, the, all the DCI players pretty much, they're all pretty much Unix based, they're not really designed to do eCinema solutions, they're for DCI. So if you want to just chuck a, a, a non-DCI type file format on them, it's, it's difficult. Um, so the need for eCinema type solutions, or in other words, a replacement for this in the future of tapeless workflows and sending media around all as, as just files on the internet, you need a different type of solution. Um, and those, that's where like the um, eSIMA type solutions will probably fill that gap. So those are sort of things you're going to have to approach in the future. Now, I'll just quickly show you. Uh, I'll just cut to a few little bits and pieces. I've got some some video from Cube about their Cube Master Express, so you can have a quick look at that and how easy it is to use. Um, notice they, re they basically recommend a, a Mac Pro 8 core, so plus the, you know, so you need to invest a little bit in that. Um, or there's other solutions like um, DTS has a Eastern solution and, and then uh, the company I work for has an Eastern solution too, which I will uh, show off. Uh, I'll cut something in about how, how that works at the end of this video. Um, it's designed, it's got some features that the no one else has uh, in terms of it can basically do all the audio and video manipulation in real time so you can basically go into the theatre uh, with your computer and you can basically adjust the presentation to look exactly as you want in real time in the theatre so you know exactly what it's going to look like when, when it actually goes to screen and that's actually one of the reasons we um, developed it that way is because we believe that that's probably one of the best ways to do it. Um, so I'll, I'll do cut a little bit of video in there and uh, you can have a look. Um, and thanks.